Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is currently quarter to two in the morning of Tuesday the 5th of December 2023. I'm currently reading Earthlight by Arthur C. Clarke. I only just started it so I'm hoping to uh, get a little more stuck into that uh, on the exercise bike at the gym when I wake up tomorrow. In the meantime I'm just cracking on and being productive. I have a ton of stuff to do as usual. I will get into bed soon and might do a little bit of work while watching Netflix. We will see. So that's where I'm at. Dane reads. Hello everybody, it is currently about quarter past 11 on the evening of Tuesday the 5th of December. Um, all is good, went to the gym earlier and did a run there. So I hit my 6 miles which was good. I was hoping to hit 1000 calories burn but it turns out the app had my old weight in from when I started, not my current weight. So I actually, I updated it to my accurate weight and then it meant that my calories burn was actually less than the last run that I had. Um, but I did hit my six miles and it also, it was 9.77 kilometers. So I almost ran a 10K by accident, which is nice. Um, but because I was on the running machine, as opposed to on the bike, I didn't do any reading. I have just been working and whatnot. It's coming up. It's coming up to midnight now and I will get into bed shortly and watch Murder in the Badlands, which is a documentary on Netflix I've been watching. Oh, and I've started, as you can see, started getting my Christmas decorations out, although I haven't set them up yet. But I think Shay wants to help me to do that, so I'm going to have to wait for her. Um, but yes, I'm off to go and be a little bit more productive. I'm going to crack on with doing stuff until midnight, I think, and then get into bed. All right. Hello everybody, as you can see the tree has come along slightly. I still haven't actually decorated it because I know Shay wants to do it though. Um, but I've done, you know, there's some bits, some bits about. Um, it is currently quarter past 10 on Wednesday the 6th of December 2023. Uh, I was up to about 5am yesterday. I, I was watching Murder in the Badlands on Netflix until like 3 and then I tried to sleep. But I have this weird thing with my anxiety sometimes where I try and sleep. And I just have panic attacks and like stomach aches while I'm trying to sleep and it's just really hard to fall, fall asleep. I actually ended up falling asleep watching snooker um, because I find it quite relaxing to watch snooker. But yes, um, yeah that happened. Then I went to the gym today. I read probably about 60-70% of Earthlight by Arthur C. Clarke which is very good so far. I've been enjoying that. I will probably be back, well I will be back at the gym tomorrow. Uh, probably on the exercise bike. I think I will let my legs... Well, on my feet mostly, to be honest. Rest a little bit ahead of park run on Saturday. Um, but yes, all doing good. I've been doing these virtual um, runs as well. I can show you actually. Look, you can see some of my medals up there. Um, but yes, that's where I'm at. I've also been listening to the audiobook of uh, New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. It's I'm like right at the end, pretty much. It's been all right. Not as good as the first book, to be honest. But uh, you know, I'm reading Twilight. Why not? Finally get into it. So yes, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna go and crack on with some work and again I'll probably get in bed about midnight-ish and watch see if I can get to the end of murder in the badlands, we'll see. Hello, it is um let's see 120 in the morning on Friday the 8th of December. As you can see I cut my hair, it was getting too long, so I gave it gave it the old chop. Um, I went to the gym early, I finished reading Earthlight by Arthur C. Clarke, strong 3.5 out of 5, full review coming soon. Um, and then I started reading Mrs. Bradshaw's Handbook by Terry Pratchett, which is like a humorous guide to the Ankh-Morpork Pork and Stowe Plains Hygienic Railway. I was thinking about doing a review of it, but I just don't think there's enough to it for me to do so. Um, I, I do need to decide what book I'm going to read next actually, so I'll set myself a reminder to do that in a minute. Been doing a little bit of work and productivity as well. I actually slept in super late, but I can tell sometimes, basically, I've got all my automation happening at home now. And it's set up so that my uh, LEDs come on, uh, my flashing LEDs come on um, an hour before sunset. And sometimes I'll be lying in bed, like still asleep, haven't got up, got up yet. And the LEDs come on and they wake me up. And I'm like, oh shit, I need to get out of bed because it's almost sunset. So. Yeah, I don't know how my sleep's going to go tonight. I finished watching the series I was watching, Murder in the Badlands. I actually thought it was a whole... It's a true crime thing about murder in Northern Ireland. And I thought the whole series was about a single case, but it turns out that it's about multiple different cases. Um, but yes, I finished watching that. So I don't know about tonight. Um, I do have Pink Floyd's The Wall to watch at some point. Um, and the first Twilight movie, and almost the second one, because I've been listening to more of the audiobook of that. But I think Shay wants to watch Twilight with me. Uh, I got some more of my sneak energy drink. Big fan of this stuff. It's like G Fuel basically. 
uh, if you know what G Fuel is. Uh, but it's a nice, delicious energy drink. Mm. It comes in like a powder and you make it yourself a bit like a protein shake. Um, and that, this is the original flavour which is rhubarb and custard, it's so good, it tastes like the sweets. Anyway, that's where I'm at, I don't think I have much to update you on. Um, the Art Centre open mic night is tomorrow so I may go to that, we will see. Uh, and then Saturday is park run and I'm volunteering to be report writer again, so yeah. Hello everybody, it is me, it is currently um, 10 past 11 on Sunday the 10th of December. Feeling a little bit down at the moment, not gonna lie, it's been just an emotional few days, I guess. I've been struggling with my mental health. Um, went to the art centre open mic on Friday, did park run on Saturday, so that was good. Slept weirdly last night, I had lots of very strange dreams. And now I'm stressing balls because I have deadlines galore, basically. But in particular, I have some deadlines for the end of this weekend, and it is the end of this weekend, and I still have. 12 hours work, something like that to do to get them done. So I think, and I've got a call at 9 a.m. tomorrow, so I think I'm gonna stay up all night working on it, do that call at 9 a.m., meet these deadlines, pass out, and then wait back up again, because I've got another call at like 7 p.m. So I think that's my plan. Um, yes, I still haven't done my housework or anything, so it's a right shit heap in here as well, very messy. Um, reading wise, um, I finished reading um, whatever book two of Twilight was. Was it New Moon? I think it was New Moon. And now I'm on, I want to say it's called Eclipse. I think it's called Eclipse, book number three. It's alright so far. Probably going to be 3.5 out of 5, just listening to the audiobook of that. And I've been reading uh, Raise High the Roof Bean Carpenters and Seymour An Introduction by J.D. Salinger. Um, and that's been my book that I've been reading at the gym. So I've nearly finished that. I did another stint uh, on the exercise bike today. Um, probably like 20 pages left to go of that. And then after that I think I have Gregor and the Marks of Core, which is the last of the Gregor and the Underlands books by Suzanne Collins, uh, which I've been reading, so I think I'll get to that soon. Um, so yes, that is where I'm at. I still need to keep on keeping on, keep on cracking on. My phone isn't charging currently, there's a little water in the charger. Um, so that's not good. But yeah, I'm going to try and fix it. Uh, and in the meantime, I think I'm going to keep this week's vlog going until next week because not a huge amount has happened. So, hopefully I'll feel a little bit better tomorrow. In spite of being only 70 years old, we hadn't been able to find any written records for this site. They were probably destroyed by the Germans before they surrendered. But looking at a battery that was similar to ours, it's obvious that... What are you up to, Shay? Is this our site? Uh, no, it isn't. It's a similar position on the other side of the island. What are you up to? Hello and greetings. Uh, I'm currently at my mum's house uh, in the Midlands. Uh, I have done that thing again. It's so okay. It's uh, five past ten on the evening of Monday, the 25th of December. It is Christmas Day, hence the hat. Um, I haven't filmed a vlog update for probably like a couple of weeks, so maybe this should be the end of this week's vlog. Um, this you know week in inverted commas. I have some books to update you on, but what I'll do is I'll just do I have it on my list? Oh my god, I don't know if I've remembered. I think I do. Yeah, so I've got to wrap up Twilight, Salinger, Collins, Oz, Hardinge, Cats, and Ginsburg. So I'm gonna wrap up all of those, but I'll film it for my wrap up and then just put put it in here again because laziness and I don't want to have to talk about the same set of books twice. Um, I'll give you the update, I mean, I've been super busy with, I had a client uh, who, <laughs> so actually, basically I was writing, ghost writing two books from, at, the, at the same time, um, and I finished one of them and then had the other one, and the, the deadline for 50% of that was today, um, which I managed to get done, I managed to send that over yesterday, uh, but yes, I've mostly been working still over Christmas. Today I have had the day off, but I've been writing my own stuff, doing some editing, things like that. Um, I'll give you an update on that in a minute, I suppose. Um, but yes, so that's why I've been super busy. I've just been working. When I haven't been working, I've been just staying on top of the housework and things like that. Um, Shay and I had our little Christmas dinner, so I had to cook that, and then I had to clean up from cooking that and get ready to travel and stuff. Um, get the house ready to leave the cats. Uh, my friend Dave has been checking in on them, and I have some cameras going as well, so I can see what they're up to. They are coping okay. Dave's checking in on them again tomorrow, and then I'll be back uh, the day after, so it uh, shouldn't be too bad for them, and they've got each other as well. 
Um, but yeah, so I was keeping busy with that, keeping busy with going to the gym every day. Um, so I haven't had much time for filming. Um, I mean, I think even looking at my YouTube, I haven't like, a, no, a new video hasn't been posted for like 10 days, 11 days, something like that. So I need to kind of get back on top of that in the new year. Um, but yes, so I traveled down, well up, traveled up to stay at my mum's on uh, Friday night. Um, because on Saturday morning I went to do park run with my dad. So park run is the weekly 5k that I do. I normally do Wickham Rye, um, but I did Tamworth Castle Grounds on the 23rd with my dad. Uh, I was saying to everyone, it isn't a race unless I beat him. I did beat him by about 45 seconds. I mean, he is 65 next year, so it's not not the greatest of achievements, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I also beat my personal best. I did uh, 29 minutes, 47 seconds, which is my first sub 30 minutes um, time. So now I need to try and match that for the uh, the next time I do the park run in, in High Wycombe on the 30th, I think. Yeah, it will be, it will be the 30th. So that's kind of my goal with that. Um, I had like a dinner, a family dinner with, with my dad and his side of the family as well. Uh, Christmas Eve, we mostly took it easy. I chilled in my festive pajamas all day. Uh, we watched a few movies. My mum's partner, Al, came to visit. Uh, so that was nice. Today, we got up at like eight-ish, opened presents, uh, and then headed off to uh, Swaddling Co, which is where my, my grandparents uh, live. And we went out for dinner, so that was nice. Uh, I had a three course, you know, vegan meal. Uh, I, was, I think I was the only person who ate every bite of every course, so that's that. I also had a, a cherry bakewell mocktail, which was very nice. Um, yeah, and then we got back here about half seven-ish. Chilled for a little bit because I felt very travel sick. Because um, I, I, I get travel sick being in a car. Um, but yeah, it was, and then after that I've just been cracking on with things. Cracking on with my writing, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I've also been playing a lot of Pokemon Go on my phone. Um, never got into it before. I'm now playing it like a madman. Um, so yes, let me know in the comments if you play Pokemon Go and we can hook up. Because I need more friends. I've actually joined some like... There's got to be Pokemon Go groups for the local area and stuff that I can join um, to, you know, friend some people that, because I need to send gifts and stuff, uh, you know, yeah. you need friends to progress in the game or it helps, certainly. So that is that. Um, Writing-wise, well, I've had my edits back on Meet, which is getting published by um, uh, Genius Books sometime next year. It's getting, well, it's getting republished. So I've had my edits back from them, so I'm just kind of working through those at the moment. Very minor things, a few comments here and there, but mostly it's like using the Oxford comma. They, they want to use the Oxford comma. Um, I'm very much a mood comma. -er. It, it's pretty bad. Like, I either do or don't use it, so I'm just going to go with them and accept all of the Oxford commas. Um, and yes, so I've been working through that, and I've also been working on Snowbound at last, which is my work in progress, which has been my work in progress for about eight, nine months. So this short story collection, basically based on the true story of what happened when uh, Shay and I were in Iceland, our coach went off the road into a snowbank. Uh, and basically this collection follows a group of tourists who are telling each other ghost stories to keep themselves entertained while they're awaiting rescue. Um, so I finished doing what I've called all like the filler stuff, all the bridges. So basically you've got the first chapter and the end chapter are about the coach trip and the accident and the rescue. And then every chapter in between is a short story with like a, probably about a page worth of material of the survivors. Well, I say survivors, everyone survives, no one dies, you know. Um, but about a page worth of stuff of people chatting to one another and deciding who's going to go next and stuff. It's actually a retelling of, or a reimagining of a Bram Stoker short story collection where the same, roughly the same thing happened. A bunch of people got trapped. I think they were on a train and they got trapped in Scotland. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's kind of my take on that based on my own experiences. And then each of the short stories is uh, taking place in a different country that I visited. So I'm currently working on um, Turkey's one, which, what's the working title? Uh, it's a possession story, which is very exciting. Um, let's see, where is it? Da -da -da. I told him first person, the possession of Daphne Degiamensi, I think is how you pronounce her name. I don't know. I have just done a little bit of googling to find out Turkish first names and surnames and that's how we came up with Daphne. It's actually told by the passenger Zeynep who uh, went to school with Daphne 
so, so that's kind of cool. Like the, I mean, this has got uh, it's got a stone's throw in it. Actually, a character based on the character based on me tells a stone's throw, um, which is the story I wrote for Local Haunts, uh, edited by Regina St Clair here on on BookTube. Um, it's also got uh, yeah, Gorilla comes to Seshvidja, um, which is my Iceland story. Um, well, I mean, the current title. What do we got? We've got chapter one, the accident. Chapter two, Greta comes to Sesvajur. Chapter three, a stone throw. Chapter four, the 813 trolleybus. Chapter five, Les Catacombes de Paris. Chapter six, the possession of Daphne Degemansi. Uh, chapter seven, the Black Knight of Manuel. Chapter eight, a Mulher Branca. Uh, and then all the way down to chapter 17, which is rescue. But at the current pace I've been writing this book is taking me forever. So there's a good chance I'll have visited another new country by the time. By the time I finish writing it, we, we'll see. Um, but it is nice, because each time I finish one of these short stories, I can then pop it out on my radio show. Oh yeah, speaking of which, on my radio show, I missed uh, an episode. I had it all filmed and edited, the promo posted and all of that stuff, and then just forgot to upload the audio, because it, it was supposed to go out in the evening that Shay and I had our Christmas dinner. So I missed it. I missed a week of that. Um, but yeah, we're just catching up next week. It's fine, it buys me a week. Uh, I need more guests as well but yes i think that's where we are so i'm going to cut in here and uh and uh, show you the reviews and then i'll i'll cut to the outro all right guys i am in my mum's kitchen filming a little bit of wrap up because i've fallen behind with all of my filming as you do um so we're going to start with breaking dawn by stephanie meyer which is yeah it was breaking dawn the fourth and final book of uh, the twilight series now the, the series started pretty good. I liked book one. Book one was good. Book one was like vampires, book two werewolves, book three, the, you know, the goings on between the vampires and the werewolves. Um, but then Jacob just kept sexually assaulting Bella and it got really uncomfortable to read about. Then she got pregnant with Edward's baby, even though he's a vampire and he doesn't have a heartbeat so I don't understand how he got an erection because that's caused by blood going to the penis it was all very weird um, yeah I just couldn't suspend my disbelief with it anymore um, and also it just ended up with all of the characters all being fundamentally unlikable um, so I gave it like a weak 3.5 out of 5 maybe even just a 3 out of 5 again strong start to the series book one if, if you're interested especially if you i guess if you're a dude in your 30s like myself um not traditionally seen as the, the target audience for twilight just read book one and then call it quits i think that's how you're going to get the best reading experience out of it hello it is a uh, wrap up time so i read um yeah sorry for the filming angle also i have wet hair you're just gonna have to deal with this so i read raise high the roof bean carpenters and seymour an introduction by jd salinger of um um what's it called I'm with holden caulfield catcher in the rye of catcher in the rye frame fame he also has a book called franny and zoe which i haven't read yet but basically i guess the characters from that were in this uh this is written from the point of view of this character who's Seymour's brother. Um, the first is kind of a more traditional short story about Seymour skipping his wedding day and his brother goes along to it not knowing that the, the groom isn't going to turn up and then you kind of learn a little bit more about his relationship with his brother, the kind of person his brother is, all of that stuff. Uh, and then in Seymour, an introduction, it's much more like a sit down uh, first person like remembrance of Seymour that was a lot more experimental and um, you know it's one of those stories that had paragraphs that stretched over three pages so it struggled to hold my attention but it was it was pretty good um, I'd give this collection as a whole a 3.5 out of 5 but it was a 4 out of 5 for uh, Raise High the Roof Beam Carpenters which is very nice like classic short fiction uh, and then Seymour an introduction was a 3.5 out of 5 so moving on from that, we have um, Gregor and the Marks of... Hang on, what, what, which one was it? All right, so then we have Gregor and the Code of Claw, which is book number five in the Gregor the Overlander series. It kind of wraps things up. It ends in the way it kind of has to end. Uh, it actually, the, the ending of it almost reminded me of the His Dark Materials ending by Philip Pullman, and that you've kind of been building up slowly towards this, you know, teenage love story and then they have to be separated into separate worlds uh, but yeah pretty much the premise of this is just there's a big old battle um, you know from reading the series up to this point at the end of series four it kind of ends just before this battle takes place 
And what's interesting, it does do a bait and switch. So you think this is the big battle that's about to happen, and then no, it doesn't. It doesn't go into that. They have like a small skirmish and retreat, and then there's a bigger battle later on. Um, we see how the prophecy is fulfilled. Um, it's very much like the coming of age of the series as well. It was a satisfying ending to it. It wasn't mind blowing, but it was pretty good. I'd give it probably a strong 3.5 out of 5. It's probably the second best book in the series, in my opinion, and uh, worth reading if you've got that far, you know? Or as the Americans would say, gotten. But that's the story for another day. I've been editing one of my books and they wanted to use the word gotten, and I said no. All right, I've got a few more to wrap up for you. Luckily, I do still have some of these books knocking around. Uh, so I read The Magical Mimics in Oz, which is Wizard of Oz book number 37 by Jack Snow. Um, the introduction to this was interesting because it said it's one of the, like, the darker Oz books because basically you have like doppelgangers. Uh, the bad guys in this kind of freeze the Ozites in the position that they're in, you know? Um, and then like mimic them and take, take over the form of their bodies. Uh, it's like, uh, what's the other thing that you'd hear about, like shadow people and all of that, you know? Um, so that was kind of the plot of this one. It was actually really interesting and really well done. Um, quite sinister at times as well. Um, overall, probably like a 3.5 out of 5, a strong one. I've been really impressed by the uh, Jack Snow Oz books, and there will be more of these coming soon as well. Um, you may notice if you're watching this, it is now, it's well into January. I'm late with all of my, my wrap-ups, so I'm going to try and whiz through a few of them. Uh, then we have Deep Light by Frances Hardinge, and basically, I've read three of her books now, I think, and each one of them has really impressed me. They've been a really good at world building, to the point at which it feels as though you're reading part of a series, but they're standalones. Uh, in this one, it's kind of hard to explain what's going on, but basically, we follow these people living in kind of like, like an archi archipelago or whatever it's called, like lots of little islands, um, and there are these huge gods, like, there's actually some illustrations of them somewhere in this. Yeah, here we go. The, the mightiest gods of the myriad these huge gods living in the uh, water and every now and then like bits of godware which is kind of like bits of the gods bodies basically like washes up and um, we have these like roguelike kids who go off on an adventure while well, this one of them in particular goes off on an adventure and then the gods kind of come back but we learn maybe the gods aren't good to have around you know um, it's really difficult for me to talk about this without spoilers so um, yeah you're just going to have to trust me that it was very good and a review of it is coming soon. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Alright, so then I read a couple of books for cats, so I have them up there, but I, I can't reach them. I've put them up on display, but my uh, girlfriend got me for Christmas. She got me uh, Is Your Cat a Psychopath by Professor Tiddles, um, which is just a fun little... Um, you know, it's a book designed to help you to figure out if your cat is a psychopath. Obviously, your cat is a psychopath. Um, probably the most fun part about this is that it came with, like, they'd created an MBTI, a Myers-Briggs thing, um, for cats, which I thought was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed reading that. Um, I didn't actually apply the Myers-Briggs things to my cats because it seemed like a lot of effort, but I did think it was a cool idea that it had it included. Um, and I also read The Cat Who Taught Zen by, I believe his name was James Norbury. Uh, and this was a very beautiful book, uh, illustrated as well. And it basically tells tales of um, this cat's journeying, basically. And it uses the cat's journey and the kind of adventures it has along the way and it, the people that it speaks to as a way of explaining some concepts from Japanese Zen. So that was a 4 out of 5. That one was very good. Uh, the cat, Is Your Cat a Psychopath? That was a 3.5 out of 5. I then read The Collected Poems of Allen Ginsberg, 1947 to 1997. This was a big book about that wide. It was huge. I think about 1,200 pages. Now, I did save myself a little bit of effort because what I didn't do, I didn't bother rereading um, the section, you know, the, for example, Howl and Other Poems is in it, and I've read that, like, several times. So I didn't bother rereading the individual poetry collections that I'd already read in the past, so I just read what was new to me. Um, but it still kind of kept me going over Christmas. There's also lots of notes and essays and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I, I put in my written review of it. It's probably only going to be of interest if you're a diehard Ginsberg fan or if you just want a single reference book, especially for some of those, uh, you know, the poems that are less likely to be posted individually online. So if you're looking for a specific poem, that would be the place to go for it. Uh, but I gave it a 4 out of 5. So there we have it. That's that's it for not this week, but this vlog. Uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.